Hi everybody, it's your girl Bunny. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, directed by Quentin Tarantino, starring Leonardo DiCaprio and Brad Pitt. My review is coming up next. You don't want to miss it. you guys so let's get started just a fair warning that this review does contain spoilers so if you don't want to know anything about the ending now is the time to click off this video so we have Leonardo DiCaprio who is the lead character who plays Rick Dalton and Brad Pitt who plays his stunt double as Cliff Booth. So we have Rick. He is an actor who is on his last limb and he is in a series named Bounty Law. So he drinks a lot. He's a chain smoker. You can pretty much tell that he's an actor on his last leg, no point intended. And he is trying to prove to Hollywood that he still has what it takes, that he still has a little bit of fire left in him. Now his stunt double is pretty much in the same predicament. He is a stunt double um, actor who can't really find any gigs. He has a bad reputation within Hollywood. People are kind of eerie of him. There's a rumor going around that he killed his wife and got away with it. You see them get in a car, they drive to the set. Leonardo is just, he's in and out of it. He's drinking a lot. We watch how the story develops as Rick is an actor, but you can kind of tell his gigs are just not getting any more speed. They are kind of dwindling down and he's on his last series. He's recorded a few pilot shows. He's inquired about movies and nobody is budging and nobody is giving him a call back. He lives in a home that's not too bad, which is in, on the hilltop in Hollywood and his next door neighbor is a big time actor and he has a really hot girlfriend that everybody knows and he's never been able to talk to him face to face he just lives uh, next door I guess you can say to a a-lister and Leonardo DiCaprio's character is borderline BC getting to that level so he's just thinking like man if I could just meet my next door neighbors then just maybe I would have more opportunities maybe I can rub elbows with a little bit more celebrities maybe I could just become more well-known so Brad Pitt's character he he starts to develop a friendship with him, with Rick, and saying, hey, we're both kind of in this situation. You drink all of the time. I'm your wingman. I can take you where you need to go, and you can maybe get the word out for me that I'm looking for stunt double gigs, and we could just work together as a team. So they develop this friendship as we are trying to make it friends. So as Brad Pitt's character, character goes back home, you see that he's living even worse he's living pretty bad he's in a trailer he's in the middle of nowhere he lives behind a drive-through cinema which really has um, a lot of undertone meanings of what of a drive-through cinema meaning you're driving through that career you're driving through that life it's not uh, permanent you're not comfortable you're just there to do the art and leave that kind of has an undertone of what a drive-through movie is and especially the meanings within Hollywood in 1969 so producer Marvin Swartz played by Al Pacino decides to meet up with Rick to tell him hey it's not the end I've seen you in a few movies in which they show clips from these movies that he likes that are pretty cheesy <laughs> and but he loves it he says hey i really think that you should give me a chance there's this opportunity for this new show it's a western it's another western i know you don't want to do a western but i really really think that you should give this a chance and i'm gonna call up a few people and we're gonna make this happen the reason why your career isn't taking off is that because you always play a character that gets killed and nobody thinks about you because you're not the hero we need you to be in a movie where you are the hero and he says well I mean, the other movies, you know, I kick ass, man. And, you know, people just remember me from being the, the villain and I kick people at, people's ass and that's it. I don't need people to remember me. And he said, no. Al Pacino's character said, you need to play a hero. You need to be somebody that's still standing at the end of this movie. So he thinks about it. He calls him up. And he takes this dive in playing a totally different character. Now, this is where the movie 
goes left, right, up, down, and all around and all over the place. You go in with an idea and you have an idea that this is a character whose career is not taking off. He feels bad, he's depressed, he's smoking, he's drinking, he has a buddy sidekick that's there for him and you like, and you really don't know how this story is gonna turn. And I don't think Quentin Tarantino knew how the story was gonna turn. So he put he put in so many different synopsis and plots within one movie. When it ended, you were really kind of confused. So things start to lighten up for Rick. He has this new role, he's ready to kill it. And his friend, you know, of course, Cliff, he's like, hey, can you see if they have another role for me? Can you see if they need some stunt doubles? He said, hey man, I'll do what I can. I'll see if they got some stunt double gigs for you. I'll see if they need some more people. He really pushes with the casting director and asking, hey, I know you guys need some more stunt doubles. Can you do what you can? I need you to, to help me out, man. So the director, the casting director, ends up saying, you know what, I'm responsible for the stunt doubles he can just start to get into costume and he can go to the side and if we need him we can use him we see mike moe who plays bruce lee he did an amazing job you had to do a double take because you thought man this is he really looks like bruce lee he knew how to hold his body you could tell he was a student of bruce lee and watching a lot of his movies because he had him down he actually had bruce lee's character down really really well and Bruce Lee is shown on set, he's bragging, I have lethal weapon hands, you know, if I, if I punch somebody, I might kill them, so these are like lethal weapons, I can't, you know, touch anybody, and so, of course, Cliff's character says, hey, you know, um, I can take you down, they get into a little fight, everybody on the set sees that, hey, this stunt double knows what he's doing, but that didn't mean anything in the film. He does the film, he realizes that this character is not a typecast character, but every scene he's killing. He's pulling these wonderful performances, and that's when we see the scene from the preview when the little girl says, hey, that's the best acting I've seen in my life. So he's developing as an actor, and you're really excited about that. So keep in mind that when Leonardo DiCaprio's character, right, when Rick is on the set, Cliff is using his car and driving around and waiting till he's done filming. He comes back to the set and he picks him up. Here's another scene that's confusing. So as Cliff is driving around, he always sees this really hippie girl that's kind of out and hitchhiking and he sees her all the time. And every time he passes her by, he gives the thumb down that, no, I'm not gonna pick you up. I can't pick you up, I gotta stay focused. So this happens throughout the movie. So eventually he, gives it a whirl, he always sees this cute hippie girl on the side of the road and he finally picks her up. And he says, hey, where are you going? She says, I'm going to this particular place. He takes her there and it's pretty much just like a ranch field area full of hippies and kids that don't have any responsibilities and people in their early 20s just kind of lounging around. Another confusing turning point, when he gets there, he recognizes the property belongs to somebody that he used to know and he drives there and you have a really eerie feeling you're starting to think is this a movie that's turning into a murder mystery is there gonna be some weird crazy stuff going on and he says hey this property belongs to a friend of mine this looks familiar do you have permission to be here they say, yes, we do. We know the owner. And he says, well, I know the owner. And it goes into this just weird kind of aspect. And he's just so just persistent in finding who the owner is. And I must talk to him. He goes into this eerie house. Uh, we have the wonderful Dakota Fannin who plays one of the, the, the mother hippies that kind of looks out for the other hippie children. And he finally goes into the door and he sees the owner and we think it's gonna be this scary entry and he's just in the bed laying down and he's like, hey man, you know, I used to work with you. Do you remember who I am? He's like, no, I don't, I don't remember who you are. I'm an old man, I live here. He was like, hey man, I just want to know. You own this property. I just wanna know, did you give the, all of these kids permission to, to stay here? He's like, yeah, so that scene ends. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so the movie just lingers and stretches and goes and goes and it's just so confusing. I, yeah, it, 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 
the movie is a whopping unnecessary two hours and 45 minutes for no reason. We go into later into the film. He does a good job. He's starting to really get the word out that he's a good actor and he finally gets a big break. He films some movies overseas. He's living better. Him and his friend, you know, his ride or die that's been with him. They're able to be prosperous together. And then we have some hippies from earlier in the movie that remember him from being on the ranch and kind of being disrespectful. You can tell they're high and they just want to kill somebody and they're like, hey, this is Hollywood, man. Let's just pick a house and let's just kill people, wh whoever is in the house, because Hollywood is responsible for people murdering people. So let's just do this. And you're thinking, oh man, they're about to go in here and kill a whole bunch of people and they're high and they don't know what's going on. So, so at this point, starts to look really purges, pur pur purge-ish to where they plan and they're like, okay, let's go into this house and just kill people. They go into the house and um, typical Quentin Tarantino scene, last scene pretty much of the movie, it starts to pick up some speed and they have some action and of course Brad Pitt, he's a stunt double and he just proceeds to whoop ass, <laughs> kick everybody's ass and beat them into oblivion pretty much. And uh, Leonardo DiCaprio's character, he ends up torching one of the hippies from a previous movie that he did where he has a, a flame torch. Or... This movie was all over the place. This movie had so much potential. What would have been awesome for this movie is that if Quentin Tarantino excuse me, if Leonardo DiCaprio and Brad Pitt's characters, they look alike, you know, they're the stunt double. So what would have been awesome, anything would have been awesome, but just my guess, good writing, they could have had that they look alike. And maybe somebody wanted to hold him for ransom, but they have the wrong person. They don't have that actor. And they end up uh, stealing the stunt double and the stunt double ends up kicking their ass. That would have been great. That would have been absolutely hilarious. I do not understand how they receive such great reviews on <laughs> IMDb and Rotten Tomatoes. I am floored and kind of surprised that this movie did receive such high ratings. This is the slowest movie I'm a big Quentin Tarantino fan, and this movie was unnecessarily long and very, very slow, and the movie has so many different directions that it pulled you in. At times, it was really confusing, and you were just wondering what led to what and what it was going to mean, and then when it ended, they never tied together. All of the scenes and all of the, the, the twists never melted together. They never gelled together. Really, really disappointing. I think this is probably the most terrible Quentin Tarantino movie I've seen. And I've seen all of his films. Complete letdown. I give this a 6 out of 10. 6 out of 10. So I guess you can say I give it 60% out of 100. I thought it was absolutely terrible. Now, what gives it 6? instead of zero is of course the art direction uh the cinematography and the idea of what the movie could have been overall quentin tarantino i don't know <laughs> what you were thinking this movie has so much potential to be so many other things and you disappointed me you let me down but anywho <laughs> let me know what you think comment don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell so you don't miss any videos and make sure you follow me on instagram at the same profile name official bun underscore e love you bye